Okay, we're going to do a rigid dynamic uh, analysis in, in ANSYS Workbench 13. Uh, we're going to start with some SOLIDWORKS geometry, a mechanism that we've got. Uh, real simple. Um, it's not really a real-life problem, but it's done so you can best see how the software works. Uh, so we're going to put this back, snap this back into position. Uh, the big deal here is you typically want to start out with some geometry in a position that you might uh, uh, might make sense from a reference standpoint. So we'll flip over to ANSYS, uh, go into Rigid Dynamics, and slide that up to the uh, project schematic. Right-click, in Import Geometry, there it is. Check mark looks good, and then open uh, Mechanical. Okay, looks like uh, things came in. Looks good. Okay, so first thing we want to do, let's go and look at uh, connections. So it looks like it uh, created some contacts. We're going to go ahead and get rid of those. Delete that. Then we're going to go back up and uh, look at the geometry. Um, better yet, let's look at the coordinate system. Here's the global coordinate system and that did come in at a convenient point you want to think about that when you're creating the geometry because things are going to be in reference the weights and center of gravities are going to be in reference to the this um, global coordinate system so you want to bring the geometry in uh, in that uh, convenient point so we'll look at uh, first here the slider slot uh, I'm not sure why it was a slider slot it must have been a different piece earlier but this is um, the piece that's really fixed uh, you click on it, and at the bottom here, uh, I'll raise that up a little bit. Uh, graphics properties, uh, visible, yep, transparent, that's okay. Uh, we'll change color, maybe make it red, see what that looks like. can do that. Uh, the bounding box, uh, what's the, what cube does that fit in? Uh, properties, so it gives you the volume and the mass. Um, well, let's go back up to the slider slot. Uh, definition here. This is uh, rigid. Uh, here's where you select if you want flexible. Um, you have to do some things different if you want to do that, and we're going to show that later. So uh, for what we're doing, it's really only going to work for rigid right now. Material, structural steel, that's fine. Um, properties. Uh, here's the volume, the mass and that's a uh, actually the weight it's a, a pounds mass it's not slugs so it's in english units here it's uh it's actually a weight uh here's the center of gravity and again that's in reference to the global we flip back to the global here here's the global uh go back up to the slider slot uh what does it say 50 inches okay 50 inches in the x in the y it's roughly 0 well, those look reasonable and then the uh, mass moments of inertia. And so it has that for each of the bodies. There's the rod. Here's the rod right here. Here's the pivot arm. Uh, center of gravity or the uh, inertial coordinate system for the pivot arm. And the cylinder base. Here's the cylinder base. Okay, so let's uh, create some joints. You can do these a number of different ways. Uh, from my standpoint, um, basically what you're doing is you're uh, tying two pieces of geometry together. You're constraining it to move in a certain direction. So we'll grab that one, and we'll grab that one, and that's going to be the revolute joint. And um, so we'll go back into connections and this is going to be a body to body it comes up right here it's either a body to body or body to ground so we'll click on body to body and uh, we want a revolute joint okay so there's here are the two pieces of geometry you selected they call it the reference and uh, there's the red cylinder base and here's the mobile uh, and it is the slider slot um, so this was 
actually it was got that wrong the red this red surface is attached to the cylinder base this blue surface here is attached to the slider slot and in most cases it really doesn't matter uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, accept that uh, go back up into joints and uh, let's slide this over let's create another revolute joint right there that one that one uh, body to body revolute looks good um, another revolute to revolute up there um, that surface that surface uh, revolute okay and now the translational joint for the cylinder uh, click out of there Got that surface that surface and you'll have to do a control select to get the two surfaces um, so there's a translational joint um, take a look at that and that I'm gonna want to change notice that I'm gonna want to extend the cylinder and I'm gonna want this to be the positive direction so it has this reference coordinate system this is the reference coordinate system so we'll click on that and in order to uh, move those around I'll click on this X right here and I'll click over there and apply and that'll move the X and you can do that with any of the axes um, the other thing that comes up for each each uh, joint is it grays out the um, the degrees of freedom or directions that are fixed and it uh, highlights the direction that's uh, free to free to move in so the cylinder is free to move in the X uh, this revolute joint is free to rotate about the Z RZ um, that kind of thing okay so we have to have one joint that's fixed to the ground so basically we'll take um, this surface right here and we'll create a body to ground and fixed um, um, okay so now let's uh, do the analysis or prepare the analysis so we'll right click here um, right click uh, and let's raise this up a little bit so we can see it uh, we're gonna basically translate this cylinder um, oh maybe uh, 10 inches so we'll go uh, for 50 seconds we'll use the um, the default time steps here so uh, we'll leave that as it is We'll right click insert a um, let's do a uh, we have to turn gravity on so the standard gravity it turns out that it uh, always defaults to this negative Z direction and uh, we want a positive Y so we'll delete that um, so insert uh, acceleration I want it as components not a vector could be in a vector but here we want it in the Y in a positive 386.09 uh, okay positive being that's the acceleration and it causes the force in the opposite direction and this isn't on a body this is on all bodies so it's going to have the effect of uh, gravity okay so we're going to also insert a um, let's tr let's slide a translational joint down here and here it pops in there and we're going to have an X displacement uh, let's go velocity and a magnitude of uh, point uh, uh, five uh, half inch per second for 50 seconds uh, that should give us uh, 10 inches of uh, 10 inches of displacement um, okay so for outputs let's um, let's do the uh, cylinder force so let's grab this translational joint slide it down into solution and then we'll let's raise this up a little bit um, there's the there's that translational joint total force I only really wanted the uh, total force is good let's put it just give me the X direction the direction along the length Y and Z are going to be pretty much zero so uh, don't need to look at those 
and maybe um, let's look at one of the uh, this joint rotation here uh, let's see what that uh, where is that uh, there it is right there so let's slide that down let's slide this down into solution click on that and um, relative rotation there it is relative rotation and that uh, and it only really gives you the axes that uh, is is the uh, critical one so relative rotation about the Z and that'll come out in degrees um, looks like we're set let's go ahead and solve that okay so if you want to look at the results um, we'll go over to um, this joint pro which was the force uh, total force in the x-axis and looks like initially it was 13,000 pounds was the startup force and gradually 50 seconds into it or, or 5 inches or 10 inches of displacement it went down to uh, 6471 so we'll an animate that looks reasonable um, let's look at this displacement so the displacement um, what was this the slider slot displacement oh yeah here was the relative rotation in the z-axis so it looks like it went through a rotation of about uh, 20 degrees you can put a pause on that uh, you can put it to the position that you want you can look at the uh, tabular data and get the actual values if you find one you can retrieve this this result retrieve this result and it'll snap it down to that position uh, show you where at where you're at on the graph get a little bit more detail on that and if you brought the model in and uh, the initial position wasn't uh, wasn't where you wanted to start out there's ways of getting around that so we'll go back into uh, joints here and so we're going to configure the let's say the translational joint so it starts out at the initial position and that again is why you want to uh, think about that before you pull the geometry in then there's this configure button click on that this little axis will come up and then you can move it around extend it and retract it Oop, put it in the position that you want and then uh, let's see you can do a reset let's slide over that over a little bit revert puts it back to where you were at uh, I think you can't see that it's kind of outside of the screen but there's a revert button just to the right um, so let's pick another joint uh, let's pick the uh, this rotational joint here and do a configure and then we can uh, rotate that and again outside of this screen I'm not sure how I can get that to come up within the screen but there's a you can actually key in a certain value and it'll snap to that position and that can be the uh, position that you may want to start out uh, start out in so we'll snap it back to where it was and uh, that's about it uh, we're gonna do a flexible dynamics problem we're going to take this same one and um, basically make that uh, flexible and look at the stresses as it's um, animating thanks for watching